we're doing it. So it's great to meet you, and I want to begin our conversation before we get into your life of coaching. How did you survive the last three and a half years of the pandemic? How did you get through it, and how did it change you? How did I get through it? With family, <laughs> just one one day at a time is how I got through it. <laughs> uh, I mean, looking back on it, it it's all a blur. Honestly, yeah. I haven't. Uh, spent too much time thinking about it. Of course, there's been time of reflection outside of that immediately. But when I go, when I think back to that, um, you know, it's, it was only supposed to be a lockdown for two weeks. So that, you know, we embraced that even that was a struggle, but we thought, you know, we're being asked to do one thing, stay home, watch Netflix, be, home, you know, slow down. Yeah. And so, and as that started to just get longer and longer in that time frame, um, I found just a lot of safety being home, honestly. Yeah. And I don't mean safety in terms of, I mean, of course, the virus was a big thing. Yeah. We should we should have been concerned, of course. Um, but I just, there was so much hostility and division. And I just, what I didn't, I started to feel this restlessness just emotionally yeah. and spiritually and psychologically. And so I just found myself, my world just got really small and we stayed sane and kept our family together and really just limited our intake of what was happening, yeah. you know, on the outside, keeping yeah. a pulse on it, of course, that's sure. the responsible thing to do. But really, it was just about creating boundaries for ourselves and just keeping it one day at a time and keep things in perspective and not let the fear uh, run us, yeah. like rule our lives. So speaking of perspective, I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids curiously asks you, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? I would say I help moms manage emotions. People, we all have emotions. So not just moms, but like we all have big emotions and third graders, children have big emotions that they, that they need help processing and recognizing that sometimes those emotions, the anger, the impatience, the uh, feeling overwhelmed or stressed out, like those things can run our lives if yeah. we're not careful. And so we have choices to make. Yeah. And so that's what I help people acknowledge. So was there an uptick since the pandemic? An uptick of emotions? Well, no, of, of clientele. Have you had more clients since? Oh, I the- had more clients during COVID. I gotcha. Okay. Yes. Okay. So before we depart this young uh, level here, what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? (laughs) Uh. Private investigator. Okay. I wanted to be a a Charlie's angel. That was, that was the biggest impact is watching that show, seeing women and, and heels and tight jeans running around. Yeah. (laughs) Some, I wanted some version of that. <laughs> sure. Did you pursue it at all? I did. Okay. I did. I actually, yeah. I, okay. I majored in criminal justice. Now, I, you know, at some point I got, I got older and got some perspective on that and what that job actually entails. And yeah, I wanted to be taken seriously and be a professional. And so I did. I got my bachelor's degree in criminal justice and I worked for an investigator. I was a private investigator for a short time for a couple of years where we specialized in workman's comp insurance fraud. So I wasn't in the front lines. I wasn't in right. uniform. I didn't care a firearm. Uh, but I just, I really liked that world of private investigations. And this was really at the beginning of the internet. So yeah. at that time, you know, our firm was hired to do a lot of the background checks, which were all online and you can only have access to them. I think with certain certifications, like as a, a as a detective agency, we had access to those things. Now it's so much easier to get information uh, yeah. on people. But at that time, we were just sort of on that cutting edge. So yeah, I pursued it for a little bit, and then ended up working in television in a newsroom for the investigative team. So I got to just extend um, my education and my experience a little bit further in television. I worked for the investigative team where we would expose small businesses, yeah. like the mechanic and you know, the beware kind of, kind of operations. So that's what I did for a little bit. And then ended up in television, just slowly migrated okay, into, from behind the camera to in front of the camera. So how did all this work for you? Where were you born and raised and what were the seeds that eventually grew into you being a coach? I was born and raised here in LA. 
So I've always lived here, except for the four years I moved away to go to college. I was raised by a single mom, uh, never, never met my dad. And my mom was uh, uh, an immigrant here from Mexico. Spanish is my first language. I learned English in school. So, uh, so I straddled both, both me being Mexican, being American, being Americanized here, being an interpreter for my mom her entire life because her English was very, very uh, choppy. And um, I just learned at a young age from her. She set an example um, and then taught me really just early on you got to you know get your education <laughs> um you can't really depend on many people i mean i sort of uh that that's the message that i absorbed right it's like i was it was just the two of us and so she set really that foundation that this is the land of opportunity we are in america you have opportunities that you know weren't afforded to her she had a sixth grade education yeah. came here only speaking spanish and so th the messaging i heard really early on is like you can do anything you want you can become, this is you, the resources are available here and I will support you and whatever it is that you want to do. So really, I just saw the possibilities of anything that I wanted to work towards. It doesn't mean I would be great at it, or it doesn't mean it was meant for me to do, but I could certainly pursue whatever it was that I found interesting. And so I've always found, found people interesting, people's stories and backgrounds. And i be just became really a good listener, a good listener. Just my curiosity would lead conversations. And I noticed that about myself at a really young age that I was the type of person that friends would come to for advice or what do you think about this? And so um didn't think much of it. Didn't really think that, that that was what set me apart as a young girl or young adult. It's like, this is just who I am. This is my personality. I can give you some perspective. I think, you know, I can... I see things um, maybe a little more clearer sometimes, or I can help people. And so that's what partly what led me, led me into the criminal justice route is I really wanted to understand uh, the psychology behind cr crime and that, uh, the, the, that kind of thing. So I ended up like, as I shared with you in that line of work for a while, then ended up in television and then slowly as I started getting older, I realized, you know, this, I started to see it more clearly that this really was what I'm, a, this is what I'm, what I'm about sure. is helping people, listening to people, offering myself as a soundboard, creating safety, um, those kinds of things. So yeah. all, all the building blocks yeah. of being a, a counselor or a therapist, perhaps, which I didn't pursue sure. life coaching was a was a faster track. Yeah, for sure. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Who's been a hero? For sure, my mom. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. And even today as a mom myself, I'm a wife, I'm a mom of two kids. And when I think back on how hard it was for my mom as a single mom working minimum wage jobs, you know, she was undocumented for a really long time until she became documented. And so when I think back, I really just draw so much strength from her. Just yeah. now I appreciate so much more the foundation that she offered me as a young girl, yeah. because I saw her do it with such little resources. And sure. I saw her with such a positive attitude with this can do attitude. And I think to myself, I have so much more than she was ever granted. I have, uh, you know, I'm married. Like I said, I have, you know, we have education and all so many more resources. And so absolutely think, well, if she can do it with limited resources. I certainly can do absolutely. In my life as it looks yeah. now. So there's probably a part of you that will never get out of that investigative journalism mode that you're in. What would be one today, a story that's brewing that you would love to crack? You would love to get in there and expose it and do it kind of in a Robin Hood sense and really create some relief? Oh, well, the first thing that pops into my mind is really the COVID, the COVID yeah. issue, the topic, the vaccinations. I mean, it's so polarizing. There's yeah. so many aspects to it. And I think all the things that we think about, that we bring to the table, that we highlight, bring focus to, they all inform the truth from one perspective. Yeah. 
but I think we've lost our objectivity. Uh -huh. And so to be able to really be objective and be able to just open yourself up to knowing that there is truth, there's, there's truth in, in, in all of these perspectives, whether you're for, whether you're against, whether it's this or that, but right now it's just so like this, it's black and white. So I, and I think that's the way to approach really any issue, any investigative yeah. story or, or reporting. Uh, I just don't know it is, you know, our humanity, we're just, we come with our own biases and our prejudices and stereotypes and our own thoughts. And I just don't know that we can um, really detach ourselves from that fully and honestly. You know, the censorship part is what's frightening to me. I actually did an interview about a month ago and somebody was talking about something and it was just bye-bye. And it's weird. Mm -hmm. Like that part to me as a journalist, as somebody that's done this for a while, that's what's really kind of weird to me. Um, yeah. Because we yeah. all in a democracy in a First Amendment world, in a place of what we call America, where we can all dispense our 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 views freely, it's not happening in 2023 the way that we probably were used to, say, 10, 20 years ago, you know? Yeah. And I mean, and it's interesting because you start putting all of these things like 9-11 was the beginning of kind of that stranglehold, like things were the Patriot Act came and then all of these things kind of became a part of well, we have to do this for the good of the 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 whole, you know, and I, I get that. That's fine. But we mm -hmm. all need to be able to have our individual way of looking at things, you know, mm -hmm. and right. it's it's strange that it's gone the other way in this modern era of everything all the time. Yeah. You know, yes. so anyway, I didn't want to divert too much off of that. So what I want to do is I'm going to get back on track. What is your motivation every day? What is it every day for you that makes you wake up, that makes you motivated to not only help others, but to evolve in your own right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's my responsibility. I feel like it's all our responsibilities, our civic responsibilities to um, be the best version of ourselves, as cliche as that sounds, but really to take inventory of where I'm at today. Like under reflect on my yesterday Go, okay, where, where was I, you know, maybe doing well, where did I miss the mark? And then today saying, can, how can I be better? How can I be just a better mom, a better wife, a better you know, human being overall? What's my contribution uh, to society to, to wake up and say, I don't just want to be somebody who takes and absorbs or just drifts through life without an aim or a focus, but really having an aim and say, what, having that in mind, whatever it is for you. So that's what, that really, it's what lights me up is helping people bring clarity to their lives and say, what, what is it that you want to accomplish in this life for the amount of time that we're here, given your resources, because we can always focus on the lack, the things that we don't have, or the things that are outside of our control. And I find a lot of our conversations are there and that keeps us really limited. We're stuck and that, well, that's not fair. And I don't have, and that's easy for you to say, okay, can we move past that to, well, let's just look at your life and my life. What is it that we do have? What's in our hands for us to do today and in this life? So those are the kind of, those are the thoughts that I think about sure. really all the time that I, I find myself reflecting on. And then how can I encourage somebody else to also just have adopt that same viewpoint? What's one of your best success stories? Hmm. Let's see. Best success story. This is more on the general, on the general side. I'm a, a woman of faith. So my clients are all are, yeah, I would say all of them are, are women of faith. And so when I am talking to clients and really just slowing down to reflect on someone's decisions that they're making, the emotions they might be feeling like that's, that's our humanity mm -hmm. embracing that humanity, right. And, and, and acknowledging that it's okay to feel what you're feeling, to be reactionary, but from a faith perspective, like this is the most exciting part for me is that when we 
you know, speaking for myself as like, again, woman of faith is to bring all things back under just that identity, right? If, if, if you and I are saying that we are believers, that we have the spirit of God in us, right? Guiding us, changing us, directing us, like filling us with peace and love and all these things that make relationships or that transform our relationships. Okay. What would it look like if you really acted on that belief? Yeah. So really just putting those two, like synchronizing the truth of our faith and then living it out. What does yeah. that look like? Because a lot of times it's compartmentalized. Like, okay, we have this maybe label of, of being a woman of faith, but then we're living over here and it's just, a, it, it's, we're not reflecting our values and our core principles and all of that. And so really just bringing those two in alignment. And then I just naturally, I'm like, oh, that's right. That's right. This is who I am. Yeah, right. Yeah. So what's been the best advice you've ever gotten professionally? Professionally? Yeah. Professionally. Even if you're afraid, do it anyways. Yeah. Or something to that effect. Yeah. I, I find that for myself, and I've really just thought about that over the years. And this is something I encourage, you know, other people as well is that I, I have, there's a lot of ideas in me. There's a lot that I still have yet to do and, uh, and accomplish. And, and I think, okay, what, what is it that's holding me back? And I think about it all this time and yeah, it's the fear, it's the fear. So if we, if we were to remove that, you know, what, what actions would I be taking? What would I yeah. be doing? Yeah. And who would I be putting myself in front of, or what stage would I be walking on to, and who would I be reaching out to, and and so then just acknowledging, yeah, that fear plays a big, a big, a big role in our lives, and we may not even be all that aware. I think we are aware to some extent, but that fear really keeps us small, yeah, and it, it shrinks us back. And so, really, just acknowledging that that's there, right? So let's say a time machine pulls up to your house after we're off this call and you could go in and see any event in human history with your own eyes. Where are you going? If I could see any event in human history. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, Joe, I'm a faith-based woman. So I'm always going to go back to scripture. I'm going to go to the Bible stories that are near and dear to my heart. I wrote sure. a book about it. So <laughs> I'd go back to the beginning of time, to the beginning of, you know, it's the garden of Eden, it's perfection, it's the origin story, yeah. the genesis of the human race. And what, what does perfection look like? Right. Before things changed, they took a turn. What, what was that like? I, I feel like we're just, we're living in sort of a shadow of our potential. And yeah. so to me, that idea of like perfection, the garden of Eden, living in, in that perfect relationship with our creator and with each other. Wow. We've come so far from that. Yeah. Yeah. We certainly have. What, yeah. what are you the proudest of, of everything that you've done in your life, everything that's happened? What are you the proudest of? I'm the proudest really for having, a, uh, for creating a family, for choosing to, to get out of my own way and, you know, marry my husband and have my kids. That's probably my, because it's probably one of the most of the things I'm most proud of, because if you had met me, Joe, in my early twenties, I was a completely different person with a different value system. And at that time I didn't see a place. I, I didn't see myself getting married or having children. Like if no, no, I would see moms with children on their hips and going, that is not for me. I just saw children as leeches and draining and uh, I don't have the energy for that. And, you know, again, I, I grew up without a dad. So my mentality at the time is I got to fend for myself and there's no way I'm going to trust my life or put my life in somebody else's hands um, in a shared capacity. So I didn't see that fitting into my, my life's plan. And so as things uh, as life went on and I grew up and I then met my husband and decided to really just take a chance and he's a great guy and we have two great kids. And so I see my, my life now and family is such a gift. Not all families are, but you know, 
we don't have a say in the family that we're born into, but we certainly have a say in the family that we get to create yeah. if we choose to do that. Yeah. And I chose to do that. And I'm so glad I did. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> Who do I think I am? Who do, you Who think do you I are? know I am? <laughs> uh, first and foremost, you know, woman of faith. I'm always going to go back to that. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm a, a great listener. I am a creative, imaginative person. I like to have fun. So I have a sense of humor. I don't take myself too seriously. I also come with, I believe, a lot of wisdom. That's who I see myself as. Excellent. So if anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, reach out to you, where's the best place to go? My website. So I call myself the life coach. A lot. I'm a life coach and a mom, hence the life coach mom title. So that's my website is lifecoachmom.net is uh, where you can find me. And then I also wrote a book that's specifically for moms. It's called SOS for the MOM, A Christian Mom's Guide to Managing Emotions. And that's on Amazon. So you can punch in my name and SOS for the MOM. Excellent. This has been wonderful. Thank you for your story. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Best of luck.